In this video, we're going to look at how you can set up your registration form and tickets for your registration event. So we're going to click on one of our registration events and in the tools list, we're going to scroll down to the registration setup tool right here and click on that. Um, when you get here, the getting started link or, or tab right here basically is a checklist that will walk you through all the steps of setting up your tickets and registration form. You can click on each one of these that will take you to the appropriate area or you can just click go through the tabs up here also. Uh, there are two places where you can display your registration form, either on the event webpage that you can create inside of Planning Pod, and I'll take you to the, that right now. Um, and the event webpage tool is one of the tools inside of the event where you can create the web page and embed this registration form inside of it. The other way that you can um, use the registration form is you can use this embed code and you can embed the registration form in your own external website. So if you have your own website built outside of Planning Pod, you can use that embed code to create that or embed it there. Here is where you can turn the registration form and the event web page on and off. So um, you can take the registration form and the event web page offline like that. We're gonna do that right now, just so those things will be offline. Um, the checkout setup area is the first place we're gonna start. Um, and the top here is where you can manage the branding for the registration form. So the event name, event point of contact, logo, and the event color. And all this information will be included on um, the registration materials. The checkout settings, let you adjust the time limit for the checkout form. You can allow ticket buyers to request refunds. You can designate how you want the processing fees to be paid. Um, you can allow a ticket buyer to edit the information and you can set a minimum purchase age. Here you can also designate if you want to ask for donations during a checkout and if donations can be accepted without a purchase. Next, you can allow people who have registered after they register to download files like maps or uh, uh, guides or things like that. You can add those files there. Here you can notify contacts of when orders are placed. That's for internal purposes. You can edit the on-screen checkout confirmation message when somebody's done ordering. You can also edit the confirmation email message. This is the email that gets sent out once somebody orders their tickets. And finally, you can um, edit and create your event policies and FAQs. We've started out, out there with some. And the checkout waiver and disclaimers lets people um, click on a disclaimer language at the end of the checkout form if that's something that you require. Now we're going to go to the tickets and discounts area. This is where you can set up your tickets as well as where you can set up your discount codes right down here. Um, we're going to click on Add Ticket to show you how to get started here. Um, you can create either a standalone or a nested ticket. Nested tickets are basically add-on tickets. You can also set the ticket name and the quantity for sale. The valid from and to dates are basically the dates and times of your event. Um, you can add a venue to the ticket, and these are venues that have been added to the event already. You can select whether this is an individual or group tickets, and you can designate um, to close ticket sale with a sold out message, or you can um, choose the wait list option um, to allow people to add themselves to a wait list. You can also reorder the tickets, and this is reordering in them in the form. Um, we're gonna click on one of the tickets right there. Um, inside of this ticket management screen, you can uh, manage the, the dates as well as a description of the ticket that you can display. The ticket settings area here, um, again, let you go back and manage the whether it's a group or an individual ticket. Designate um, how you wanna collect information for each individual attendee or only one attendee regardless of how many tickets are ordered. Um, you can, again, manage the quantity for sale, the sold out options with the wait list option there. Um, you can set a minimum and a maximum number of tickets available per checkout. You can show or hide the ticket count as well as the ticket description. And you can allow file uploads. So if people need to upload files, say abstracts or things, you can let them do that after they register. And finally, you can set a ticket password to password protect the ticket so that people with only people with the password can actually order the ticket. We're gonna scroll down here. 
Here is where you can manage the ticket type, either standalone or nested. On the pricing and sale date schedules, you need to add at least one of these schedules to your ticket. Basically, it lets you set the price and when it's the ticket's on sale. So here you can add the schedule name and you can add the um, sales beginning and end date. You can des designate if you want to show the schedule name and here's where you set the price. So you can either set a fixed price, you can make the ticket free, or you can set an open price and the ticket payer would basically pay anywhere in this range. What I've done here in my event is I've set three schedules, so early bird, regular pricing, and last minute pricing. And I've also set different date ranges for those when they go on sale. If you need to pause a ticket, pause the sale, you can pause it there, and you can also start it there. Down here at the bottom, you can set if you wanna offer at the door sales. This works in conjunction with our check-in tool, so you can designate the price of at the door sales. Here's where you can designate what type of information you wanna collect from attendees. We have standard fields here like first name, last name, email are required, but like things like phone, address, company, you can add all these to the form if you wish. Um, you can also create your own custom questions if you need to um, add or collect specific information. We've got short and long answer fields as well as multiple choice type questions that you can create and add to your form to collect information from your attendees and you can manage the order of these items by using these up and down arrows. And finally, you can also, again, manage the venues that are attached to a ticket right here, and these pull from the venues that have been assigned to the event. That's how you can manage all of the ticket settings for each ticket. Now we're going to look at the discount codes. Um, to add a discount code, just click it there. You can make a discount code by percentage or fixed dollar amount. You can set the amount there, add the code language there. Um, total uses, you can add a start date and an end date, and you de can designate whether the discount applies to the entire checkout or to just specific tickets. The payments area is where you can set up um, how you collect payments for tickets. Um, we use uh, the merchant provider WePay to collect credit card um, sales for tickets. You set up your WePay account in the settings area right here by going to credit card processing. And that is where you would set up your WePay account initially. And um, once that is all set up, when you create a registration style event, um, each time you create that registration style event, you need to click on this action required to activate uh, credit card sales for that particular registration. You can also collect payments by check right here. Um, you can designate the entity that check should be made out to, the mailing address, and how long they should be held until they are released back into the ticket population. We're going to turn our registration form and our event web page back on online, and I'm going to show you what the form now looks like. So if I scroll down my web page here, here is my registration or checkout form. So I'm gonna just pick, select one of those tickets. I'm gonna click on the CAPTCHA code. I'm gonna click on order. Here are my nested tickets. So I'm gonna select one of those also to order. Um, the next page is the information page. So um, all of the uh, standard fields and the custom questions that I created are right here. Um, this is where I can fill out that information if I'm the attendee. And once I have completed those um, forms, here's where I could upload a file, say if I wanted to upload an abstract. You can add the discount code here if you're the attendee. And here they can select whether they want to pay by check or by credit card. Also throughout the form, there is this link to the event policies and FAQs. Um, so I'm going to click on pay by check. The person would just fill out the, the uh, general information there. Um, if I selected pay by credit card, this is what the form would look like to fill out their credit card information. And at the bottom of those forms, if you designate, they need to agree to a waiver. There's that. And then they also have to designate to the uh, event policies right there. So that's a quick overview on the registration and ticketing setup. But if you have any questions, please let us know.